What is Spark Streaming? Extension of the core Spark API. It is scalable, high throughput, low latency processing. Simple batch-like API for implementing complex algorithm. It is for use cases which require a significant amount of data to be quickly processed. So we know that already, whatever it is. This is a place where probably you need to have some idea. Maybe not a complete idea, but there is something called data sources and outputs. Meaning, if I am creating a Spark streaming application, from where will I get the data? Read the data. Common sources, you know already Kafka, right? I, th I think the basics of Kafka might be covered, right? Topic, partition and all these offsets and all. Okay. So, Kafka is the most common, uh, what you say, source for getting the data. We also have Flume, okay? And then you can also read from HDFS or S3. So there is something called a text file stream, which we don't have in uh, our demo. But basically the idea is that you create a folder in HDFS and create a Spark streaming application and say five seconds. So this application will monitor continuously this folder. So if any new file is placed, it will read. Modifications are not allowed. Only new file creations will be read. So this is uh, possible only for event processing. Like one example I give is sensor data. So typically when you get the sensor data, this IoT data and all, it comes in a certain format, log format or Avro format. And customer obviously will be using some other system for getting the sensor data. And you ask the customer, hey, I need the data. So customer will say that, okay, we will send it to you in a particular folder. So you can configure an HDFS folder or something where the files will land every five seconds or 10 seconds. Then you create a text file stream which can monitor it and process it as soon as it arrives. So this HDFS S3, if my memory serves me well, the folder can be only on these two. You can't have it on local file system or, or any other place. I don't know in Spark 231 whether they have changed it, but so far no. Kinesis is very common. Uh, this is Amazon specific AWS service for streaming data. Uh, in Kinesis, you can do two things, which I am aware of. One is called a data stream. Second is called data pipeline. Uh, data stream, uh, data pipeline is exactly like Kafka. So they have, I think they have copied the concept of Kafka <laughs> and they called it some other name. Okay, because same idea, you have a topic, they call it as Q or something. Data will come, it will live there for some time. Uh, you can subscribe, get the data. Very simple. So, Kinesis also is very popular if you are reading from Amazon. It is proprietary, so that means it has to be on Amazon. Twitter, obviously. So, one small problem is that we have a demo, right, where we will be reading from Twitter. So, in the demo, there is a small problem, meaning the demo will work, that's not the problem. In the demo, we are reading the data in a bit complicated way. So wherever I have used, I use Scala. How we used to read data is like, see, Spark has no idea about Twitter, right? Spark has nothing to do with Twitter. So there is a Spark streaming Twitter jar file, which we will download. That's like a connector. So we will add this jar file to Spark. Hmm? And then we will start Spark. So Spark will know this jar file. And then we will configure the, uh, uh, you know, access keys and uh, usernames and passwords. And then my Spark will connect with Twitter, download the data, as simple as that. So usually this is how we create streams. That is very easy. But in your example, <laughs> uh, I did not create the example, by the way, so don't blame me. So what we are doing, we will use a package called a, uh, TweePy in Python. Python, there is a package called TweePy. So this TweePy package will allow you to connect with Twitter, basically. So that has nothing to do with Spark or anything. So this guy will connect with uh, Twitter and get you the data. And then you will open a socket, a port number, let's say 9000. Okay, you will get all the data to that port number through that port number. From here, then you will create a function to send the data to Spark. So it's a bit, uh, what you say, complicated. But uh, don't worry, <laughs> I will show you how to do that. Okay, so my point is that usually wherever I go, there is a jar file. It's called a Spark Streaming Twitter jar, which will directly connect you with Twitter 
uh, API. You don't have to do anything. But here, we will be using a function to collect the data and send it to the next guy. Whichever way, you'll get real-time data. So you don't have to worry. So Twitter is the next example. You can also have TCP sockets. Meaning, I can monitor a port number and whatever data you send through that port number, I can catch. So I will show you a practical example of TCP. We have it. I, I don't know whether, I mean, some companies use it still for port monitoring and all, certain port. But you can create a socket stream uh, in many situations, actually. We had a customer who was uh, monitoring certain events which were sent through a particular port number. He was catching it. Now the point is, if you actually want to monitor your network, right? So let's say you have a complex network. You have switches, routers, right? And all of them are generating data. Correct. Logs and other type of data. Now you want to get all this data in one place, right? So I have a lot of switches, a lot of routers, let's say MySQL server installed and everything, operating system, blah, blah, blah. I have a big data center. Now I want to get all this data from these guys in one place. So previously people used to do a lot of techniques for that. It was very difficult to get it. But these days you can easily use tools like Splunk, for example. So Splunk is very common. So if you install Splunk, this guy can capture all the data, okay? And it can identify any type of data. For example, if a Cisco switch is generating the data, to get the data, automatically give structure, show you the dashboard. So it is pre-configured to understand the data for visualization. So for socket streams and all, Splunk is very popular these days for port monitoring, like extensively we use. Some people use this uh, elastic search, very similar to that, right? Can define your own custom data source connector. Now, if you uh, don't want Kafka or Fluum or anything, you can create your own connector also. You can write it. The output can be sent into HDFS or a database or a dashboard, Cassandra HBase. In the Spark SQL class, did you actually connect to any database? Now, that's fine, but my point is Spark, can, Spark has excellent connectivity with RDBMS. One of the best. Like, all you need is a driver, MySQL. So once you have a data frame, there is a spark.jdbc.write. And from MySQL, you can say spark.jdbc.read. It will read a table. My point is that the same thing you use here to push to database. So usually what we do, we create something called Hive context object. And using that, you talk to uh, Hive. So I have a table in Hive. I can read in Spark. And then query. Output also I can push. And in the new Spark, I can simply say Spark session, uh, spark dot read and table name, it will read as good as that. So by default, it is reading from Hive. So we have an example of connecting with Hive. I will show you there. Anyway, I have an example. I'll show you there. So the output can be pushed to any of these things like it is here. So basically, this is the architecture. You create a streams from these sources and then you process the data and then you push the output to any of these things. Facebook does not have a direct API like Twitter. Uh, they use a graph API. The problem is Facebook stores the data in the form of a graph. Uh, graph, right? The edges and uh, those graphs I'm saying. Uh, so even if you get the data, you can't process, I mean, Spark can process. Okay, but it's not as easy as connecting with Twitter and streaming it, right? So first, you need a way to get the data to some place. From there, you can push it to uh, Kafka or somewhere and then you can process it. I don't think Facebook has a direct API where you can say, give me the data to Spark. As of now, it is not there. Twitter has. Twitter is. And maybe the reason is like Twitter data is much more predictable and small compared with Facebook data, right? You just have a JSON, basically, right? Uh, Facebook data is probably very different, actually, to get. Maybe that is a reason, right? 